a king was once traveling with his best friend. His best friend is known, of a, uh, is known with uh, this, a word that's very common. He always say Alhamdulillah. So whatever happened, he always say Alhamdulillah. So when the king was uh, traveling for hunting trip, and he cut the tip of his finger, so the blood started gushing, and the friends of the king said, Alhamdulillah. The king got mad. Why would you say Alhamdulillah for that? I just cut the tip of my finger. I'm going to be able to use the arrows and bow. You know, it's going to ruin my trip. And he was so mad at him and he star, he ordered the soldiers to take him away. When he was leaving, he said, Alhamdulillah. And even if I lost this friendship, Alhamdulillah. The king became more furious and angry and promised that when he go back to the land, he will punish him severely. Next day, the king go on his hunting trip. And he uh, basically has a very strong horse and he got... Uh, uh, separated from his uh, uh, guard and ended up in his enemy's land who they took him and they said that this is sacred land and anyone walking to the sacred land must be killed and executed and be sacrificed to their God. They laid him down in that big, shiny, uh, 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 spotless uh, marble slab to sacrifice him to their God. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him that the priest of that group said that this person cannot be killed, cannot be sacrificed. He's a bad luck for a nation if we do so, because he's missing the tip of his finger. And for our God, it has to be a complete body. And they just let him go because of that finger that he injured, or the tip of his finger that he cut it off. The whole entire way back, he kept saying, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. He got his friend out of basically where he locked him up and he said there must be something good happened to you too because you said alhamdulillah he said great king the only one who has a horse like yours is me if i was with you today early in the morning we will end up both of us in that line and they will let you go because of your the tip of your finger is missing and i will be the one who will be sacrificed to their gods so alhamdulillah that you locked me up Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Wasn't for nothing that the first verse, the first verse in the Quran is Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. It's to build that sense of optimism. I'm always grateful and thankful to Allah for whatever happened. I always say, I praise you, my Lord. Because I know you, I know your nature as a just, fair, loving. God, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also part of understanding of Al-Qadr, that we know that in order for you to achieve something, you have to take the necessary means. That's in itself, that's in itself, give you that sense of optimism, that I work and I will get my, basically, uh, the result that I want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Things not going to happen by itself. You're never ever going to leave as they say, you're never ever going to be able to leave a footprint in the beach if you sit in your bottom. You have to walk in order for you to leave these footprints. And you put effort and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for it. Part of our belief in Al-Qadr that we know Allah does not force anyone to anything. You came to this masjid by your choice. And if you, don't, if you want to stay home, it will be your choice as well. It's your choice. Imagine if we believe that we have no choice. What sense of optimism anyone can have? That's why part of our belief in Al-Qadr, that Allah give you the ability to make the choice, the ability to make the chase, the, cho the choices in your life. I might not control the wind when I sail in the, in the sea, but I always can adjust my sail to, to reach a new destination. I always have the ability to do that. So that's number one. This, the correct understanding of the concept of Al-Qadr, increase and knowledge in this area, increase your sense of optimism and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 